Thanks for joining us at Ride On Replicas, where we're proud to bring you the best scale model kit reviews on the planet. This review is brought to you in part by Rogers Hobby Center in Saginaw, Michigan, where the fun begins. This review covers the Wilson Livestock Van. It's a 125 scale kit from AMT number 1106. Now, it was first released around 1972 as AMT Kit 594 and followed by three more releases up to the present day uh, when this was released in 2018. Now since 1890 uh, Wilson Trailer has been making some of the very best platform trailers and commodity trailers on the market and you can see them on the highways and byways and out in farm country too. Now it's molded in 203 pieces and they are molded in white clear amber clear red, chrome, with black vinyl tires, metal axles, and water slide decals. Now it's a skill level 3 for the intermediate builder. When you're finished, the dimensions are approximately 19 and a half inches long, 3 and 3 quarter inches wide, and 6 and a quarter inches high. And with the body support rods holding the body up, it gets, it's about uh, 3 and 5 eighths inches high. Oh, uh, that sounds like uh, Newt trying to, uh, uh, he's got a question, so what do you got there, Newt? That's really different. Back in the early days, they must have made a model of everything, right? Very astute observation, Newt. Um, I, I would have to say that back in the 60s and early 70s, it seemed like every subject and every car and plane and ship uh, had a model made of it and even some things that you wouldn't expect. It was the heyday of uh, cornucopia for models, let's say. So did they make models of farm animals too? As a matter of fact, they did, uh, and they still do, although today's models are generally 135th scale for dioramas. But um, yeah, they used to make uh, models of farm animals, and quite a few uh, of them were pre-painted uh, figures uh, also that you could buy. Sorry I asked, I was just kidding. Well here are the contents of the kit. As you can see there's quite a few pieces, some large and some small. Um, and we'll be using mostly uh, liquid cement, uh, sometimes tube, tube glue for uh, setting up for adjustments. And occasionally um, you'll find that uh, we need to scrape the uh, chrome, or if you paint the model, uh, the paint off before that glue will set. Now, remember to heed the manufacturer safety and use guidelines when using any of the products that you see or hear mentioned in the review. Here are the decals for the kit. None of them are really very large, and most of the surfaces are flat, so you probably won't need a setting solution for these, but make sure you use plenty of warm water when you're applying them to the model. Construction starts with some of the framing and as you can see here, it's fairly simple. Uh, don't forget to uh, in, install the uh, frame hangers there. And then the, uh, the unit goes together like this. And after that, I painted it semi-gloss black. As I mentioned, um, this is a very old mold. And uh, it's showing some signs of wear. Uh, you'll get to, to see a lot of flash on some of the parts, but it's easily cleaned up with a hobby knife and a sand stick. Get these parts out of the kit, uh, including the rear, uh, you know, springs, and we're going to assemble those with the center plates and the rear plates. And then uh, once that's uh, all put together and dry, you can paint that semi-gloss black and install them onto the I-beam suspension hanger assembly. Gather up this group of parts and the um, assemble the four axle halves, push rods, and air chambers, and then paint those uh, semi-gloss black. The two axle halves then are assembled and then a push rod is attached to uh, an inside post on each side of the axle assembly. An air chamber can be attached to each, each of the push rods and then you repeat those steps for the other axle assembly. Now the axle assemblies can be attached to the I-beam suspension hanger assembly as well. It looks like you have uh, an option for the torque arms here and um, you either get to choose the curbside uh, or the roadside torque arms. I chose the curbside ones and I painted those semi-gloss black and installed that onto the axle assembly. Now we can work on the wheel assembly, so get these pieces out of the kit. 
There's four inner wheel rings and rear wheels and brake drums. I painted those to a silver color. Now an outer wheel ring can be attached to the exterior side of the rear wheel and then an inner one is attached to the interior side of the rear wheel. Now a brake drum can be installed into the inner wheel ring and attached to the rear wheel there. The two tires then are installed onto the rear wheel assembly and you repeat this process for the other three units. Get the wheel covers out and attach the, um, the hub covers there to the rear tire assemblies. Uh, be sure to scrape the plating off before you glue them. Now find the uh, sliding door tracks there and the left and right ones are attached to the roof and the whole thing is painted uh, metallic silver. Now here comes the tricky part. We're going to paint the um, sides uh, silver, the right side and the left side and we're going to spray those uh, gloss metallic silver and then they get attached to the roof assembly. But what you need to do here is work uh, slowly along the ridge uh, of each of the joins there and make sure you use some slow setting glue. Then uh, make sure that they're all um, the seams are all tight and square and then you can add some rubber bands or some F clamps to keep them in position and true uh, until they dry. There's some copyright script, uh, trademark scripting there, and some ejector pin marks uh, that you need to address if you want a nice smooth clean finish up front. I'll get these parts out of the kit there for the sliding uh, door and there's quite a few pieces, uh, 28 pieces in fact, uh, of number 51 and then the sliding door. Now we're going to paint those Model Master wood and both rear doors, all six hinges, and both of the sliding door tracks are then sprayed with some metallic silver. Now the right rear door is installed onto the right side panel, and three hinges are attached to the right rear door securing it in place. Now the right sliding door track is attached to the right rear door, and you repeat these steps for the left rear door assembly. Then carefully install the 28, number 28 sliding door sections and the single sliding door section between the rear door assemblies. Use some tape to hold all 29 sliding door sections together or they could be glued together in one piece. Now look for some of these uh, floor sections, uh, parts 9, 10, and 14, and they get sprayed metallic silver and then they are installed uh, into the box assembly. I painted the rear uh, flaps, uh, the splash guards there, semi-gloss black, and then the rear end panel is sprayed with silver, and the rear end panel can be attached to the box assembly, and then both of the splash guards are attached to the rear end assembly. Now, floor section number 13 shown here, along with the uh, kingpin and its plate, are painted uh, gloss metallic silver, and then number 13 gets installed into the front section of the box, and then the king pin plate is attached to the floor section uh, and the king pin is attached to that. Now these sections uh, for the floor numbers 4 and 15 get sprayed with the gloss metallic silver and then number 15 is installed onto the box assembly and the floor section number 4 then can be attached to that section and uh, floor section number 13. Once again we'll be dealing with some plated parts here the air tank halves and they need to be um, uh, trimmed uh, and then cleaned of, of any chrome where you're going to glue the two halves together. And then go ahead and put those together and let them dry. And then attach them to floor section number 14. Now it's time to go back and get that suspension assembly that we put together and attach it to floor section 14 as well. Now look for these four backing plates and trim them off. And then they get painted semi-gloss black. A backing plate then is attached to a tire assembly and repeated for the second tire assembly. Now a metal axle can be installed into the tire assembly and the other end of the axle slid into one of the axles on the suspension assembly. Then carefully squeeze uh, the other set of wheels onto the axle and the tire assembly um, can be just kind of squeezed together slowly and make sure that they're seated. Then you repeat these steps for the other two backing plates and the uh, tire assemblies and the other metal axle. Use these pieces to assemble the support legs 
and the halves are then assembled and painted silver and repeat this for the second upper support leg assembly. Now the upper support legs assemblies can be attached to both floor sections 4 and number 13. I have an option here you can choose either the raised ones um, or the lowered uh, position for these legs depending on whether you have it on a tractor or just freestanding. And we can add the, um, the colored reflectors now. And there's uh, two red side reflectors per side, uh, two of the red rear roof lights, and uh, there's also at the back of the roof. And then there's one uh, red rear reflector on each door. Now the tail lights, there's six in the rear end panel, and edge reflectors, there's two uh, each on the side by the doors. Then front side reflectors, the amber lenses, uh, one on each side, and they're attached to the trailer assembly using some clear parts or white glue. We'll use these parts to assemble the tire carrier. Now the uh, left and the right carrier, the pulley bracket and the winch then, can be painted uh, metallic silver and attached to the front panel. And the winch handle is attached to the winch. Well, that does it for construction. All you have to do is choose your decals and apply those and you've got a really nice looking uh, model of an unusual subject. Um, let's just face it, there's just not that many livestock vans out there uh, on the model market at this scale. So uh, once you're done though, I mean it's it's a pretty easy build. Uh, there are some small parts, but overall it's, it's not too bad. Now I, I think it might have been uh, better uh, to rearrange the sliding door in the back um, uh, to have that so that you know when the uh, the rear doors can't be really operational or the sliding door assembly will fall out of the grooves uh, maybe a different way to mount those uh, brackets but in any event um, if I were you I'd buy one and put it on my shelf we hope you liked this premium scale model kit review and so that you don't miss any more, please you subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking on the icon in the lower right hand of any of our reviews. And you can find us on Facebook or our website, rightonreplicas.com. Thanks.